On to this now. The Department of Correctional Services has hit back at allegations made by Pop Crew. The police union raised concern over the transfer of an inmate to the Uppington Correctional Centre. It alleged that COVID-19 lockdown procedures weren't followed in the process. Let's get some clarity now. I'm joined via Skype by Correctional Services spokesperson Singabako Nkumalo. Uh, Singabako, thank you so much for joining us uh, uh, this morning. Some very serious allegations made by Pop Crew. What can you tell us about the transfer of this female inmate from the Johannesburg Correctional Services to the Uppington Correctional Facility? Um, Pop Crew says that this, go, this flouts lockdown procedures, which has put um, a, a stop Stop to or uh, uh, as uh, sort of frowned upon the transfer of or movement of South Africans between provinces. What can you tell us about this uh, this case? A very good morning and uh, thank you for inviting us. One must say that it is unfortunate that a statement like that was made by Pop, which is part of organized labor, and it's a union that from time to time uh, we do engage with them. And even as we've been working on the directives uh, for the lockdown, they've been to our offices, we've been calling one another. So we're, we're of the impression that we have a cordial working relationship. So the statement really took us by surprise. But what was even more concerning was some of the unfounded allegations raised there to say, but if perhaps they just took a minute back and conduct us, conducted us to check if indeed what is given to them is true, we would have said to them, yes, factual information, so that when they go out, at least what they have is based on facts. But coming back to your question, the very same regulations that uh, Pope Crew is saying were floating, there is a provision there, considering that correctional services is an essential department, that if the head of the institution uh, approves for a particular move or transfer to be made, then let it be so, but we are also doing this in a, a, in a responsible manner, and we only do this on exceptional cases. It's not like any case where we say, no, we cannot do that. For instance, with this particular case, there was a security threat analysis done. And as a security department, we needed to effect that transfer because there was something that we picked up and we needed to act on it. It would have been irresponsible of us to, do, uh, to sit back with such crucial information and not act. And uh, you also have to remember that there is not uh, much activity in our centers due to lockdown. So if you pick up certain information and it's more threatening, you've got to take action and, and take that action much quicker. So as a department, all we are saying, uh, we really appeal uh, even to other forms of um, uh, unions to say it's important during this time that we work together. That where we we are not clear about certain things, let let us ask questions to say what's happening here, and we're always available to provide answers. Now there was another question asked specifically about this Uppington Correctional Facility that this female inmate was transferred to. Uh, um, uh, allegations by Pop Crew that uh, staff there do not have access to enough PPE, personal protection uh, equipment and clothing, as well as a question being asked about the screening facilities of inmates and staff that are being allowed in and or, and, and in some cases in terms of staff out of the facility. Uh, what's your answer to those? allegations in our response we even provided the exact figures in terms of where where are we with regards to personal protection equipment to, to say this is the number of clubs available these are the masks and these are uh, I think we had about 1055 liters of, 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 of sanitizer and and, we, and we're just demonstrating to say please just verify information before you go out to the media and, and, and make such damning statements because they were fed lies. We must put it as, as that. They were fed lies. We have more than enough uh, PPEs there. And we have developed a system, and we've been communicating about it, where we are able to monitor everything that is happening in our, in our, in our correctional facilities so that where we pick up a shortage, we are able to provide stock immediately. Or let's say perhaps one center in free state is, ra is running uh, out of uh, gloves. Then we are able then to... Uh, to instruct another center not far from them 
to give them, you know, that stock whilst we are transporting additional stock. So for us, we do feel that there are much bigger issues which should be really uh, uh, taking our time to say how best are, are we responding to COVID-19 rather than really dealing with the you know, information which is not correct and something which, you know, we can really deal with if perhaps we just, you know, take a moment and say, okay, colleagues, what's happening here? Are our members uh, protected enough and, and were able to say, yes, they are, they are being protected, where there are challenges, we're able to say, here's a challenge, here's a challenge, and, and let's work together to fix that. I think the country, what it needs right now is confidence to say, you know, things are happening and where things are not really working well, how best are we able to fix such things rather than, I think, going to the media, making all sorts of allegations which are really, really not assisting. It, Just quickly it, it, before yeah. I let you go, unfortunately I had to step in there, before I let you go, um, now the Justice Minister started earlier this week on a, a good and positive note. Uh, he was very happy that no cases of COVID-19 had been detected within its prisons, but um, that has since changed with news that an official who works at a woman's prison in East London has been admitted to hospital following testing positive for COVID-19. Uh, I'm sure you are aware of that case. Uh, talk now of mass testing, uh, uh, not just at this woman's prison in East London, but also at others. Can you update us on that specifically? We can confirm that we have two positive cases at this London Correctional Facility. And um, uh, the, well, I think the first case was confirmed about uh, two, two or three days ago. And uh, when this was confirmed, or before even the results came back, as a department, we had already asked this official to go and self-isolate at home. We also started with the tracing process where all the officials that she came to conduct with, we also asked them to isolate at home. All of them have been tested. And um, only one uh, official has received the results because she utilized a private laboratory. So those results came back much quicker. But we're expecting the other bunch of results uh, on Tuesday next week. So as a department, it's something that we're monitoring. And we have a plan in place because our strategy looked at prevention measures to say we really go hard on that. But we said, should it happen that the virus managed to find its way to our centers, we then have to move to a phase that you call containment and treatment. So what has happened in this land and is now taking us, you know, to that state to say how best are we able to contain and treat those who get infected. And what we've done as well, we said we all we do not just have to test officials. We must also test inmates in case some of those officials did interact with inmates there. So for us it's important that we know um, uh, the status of everybody at East London and we also test even people who reside within our premises because now it's important that we really really lock down that facility so that any movement is accounted for. Okay we're going to have to leave it there thank you so much for that. Correctional Services Spokesperson Singabako Ntumalo joining us live there via Skype.